gently close your eyes do deep breathing We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्य करवाह तेजस्वीनावदी तमस्तु मिदावह ओ शाति 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses sixty-eight to seventy-two of chapter two. Tasma dhyasya mahabaho. Tasma dhyasya mahabaho. निगृहीता सर्वश निगृहीता सर्वश इंद्रियांद्रियाभ्य इंद्रियांद्रियाभ्य प्रतिष्ठिता तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता यानिशा सर्वभूता तस्याम जागर्ति संयमी तस्याम जागर्ति संयमी यस्याम जागृति भूता यस्याम जागृति भूता सा निशा पश्य तो मुने सानिशा पश्य तो मुने आपूर्यमाणमचल प्रतिष्ठ आपूर्यमाणमचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्रमाप प्रवशति यद्रमाप प्रवशति यद्व काय प्रवशति सर्वे तय प्रवशति सर्वे स शाति मोति न काम कामी स शाति मोति न काम कामी विहाय कामान्य सर्वान् विहाय कामान्य सर्वान् निस्पृह पुमाचरति निस्पृह निर्ममो निरहंकार निर्ममो निरहंकार स शाति मधिगछति स शाति मधिगछति एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ 
प्राप्य स्थिवाकालेपि ृछति हरि ओम एंड अ वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो वी हैव बीन seeing the sthita pragnya a person who is well established in this wisdom a person who has reached the infinite and who is undisturbed in that state he never comes down from that state now we see that in these verses krishna is giving various angles i would say they are various uh, doors or various uh, facets now each side is uh, may, may look totally different from the uh, to- totally different from others and unique also so it's almost like read uh, st- uh, studying about uh different people you know like if you observe an object from the back it is it looks in a particular way if you observe it from the front it looks in a particular way if you uh if you were to take a microscope inside the object and observe it that will be totally different so it's the same thing the sthita pragnya when the different aspects are being given uh they are all interconnected but by themselves also they are uh, so unique for example in this verse uh 69 he gives the three facets you know sanyami munihi and pashyatah now these are uh individually independently also complete that is if you take sanyami alone and you go into the depth of it it covers the sthita pragnya in totality that is also there and at the same time when you study all these facets together like sanyami then you have munihi pashyatah so all these facets when they are studied together they also give you a complete picture now you may wonder how is it possible how can the part be equal to the whole i don't know whether you are getting the point here if you just take up one facet just sanyami or munihi or uh, pashyatah or any facet from the previous verse and you go deep into it you will get the whole wisdom or if you study all these together also you will get a complete picture now the second thing you can easily understand when we say all the aspects if you study you will get a complete picture that is easily understandable by you but the same effect can be got even if you go deep within one how is that it is something like this supposing you um, you have 
the various steps to go to the top floor and uh, you are walking on uh, on the staircase now you want to know what that uh, top floor the flooring is made up of let us say it is all the same flooring the steps and the um, uh, the floor of the uh, the top floor that is a terrace or some kind of a small space is there just for argument's sake let us say it is all made up of cement now you go and ask uh, the expert now what is the top floor made up of he says cement now you want a first hand experience you are not able to understand it from here so he tells you you take the first step second step third step you go up and when you reach there you you will see that it is made up of cement so you follow his instructions and you go to the top floor and see that flooring and you say uh, uh, now i understand that uh, this is made up of cement now once you have understood that thereafter when you come down what is amazing is that the person tells you it is not only the top floor but right from uh, step 1 all these steps are made up of the same cement only now with the knowledge of the cement if you examine the first step and second step and each and every step individually you will again understand what cement is so step by step when you moved up and when you went to the final uh, floor you were able to get a full understanding of what cement is but at the same time if you had gone deep within the first step itself you would have still got the same understanding of what the cement is because all the steps are made up of the same cement and the final floor is also made up of cement only similarly each and every facet each and every step which is giving here is an aspect of the infinite and when we say it is an aspect of the infinite what you need to understand is actually infinite cannot be divided this is mathematically also true infinite cannot be divided so one aspect of the infinite actually is the whole infinite so whether you pick up one aspect or whether you pick up two aspects or whether you pick up 10 aspects that is not important here what is most important is are you using them to reach the infinite or not that is why you know it um, uh, it is repeatedly said in these lectures that don't be bothered about studying different uh, texts oh i am doing the bhagavad gita i want to know you know last week i mentioned about uh, Uddhav Gita. I mentioned about Krishna's discourse to Gopis. So now let me go and read that. Now then, I mentioned so one day I just give a reference from Shiva Purana. Oh, let me go and read that. One day I may give a reference from a, one Upanishad. Oh, let me go and read the Upanishad. So if you have that kind of a of a seeking, that is actually not seeking the truth. That is extroversion. later on um in uh, i think it is in the fourth or fifth chapter krishna gives this he says different type of people seek different things according to that they are given whatever they are seeking now he uses the word jignasu jignasu to mean those people 
who are information hunters. He says, if you are an information hunter, you cannot become a yogi. You cannot become a true jnani. So whatever material is being given here is more than enough. Actually is much more than what is required. That's what I told you, you know. Um, if you read the Upanishads, again, when I say if you read the Upanishads, now I am not asking you to go and read the Upanishads. See, that is just a terminology which we use to explain things. Because when things are explained from different angles, it becomes easy for you to gain the wisdom. It is not a sadhana practice which is being given. Sadhana practices, the different uh, practical aspects, are being covered separately, you know, that is what you need to focus on. Now, if you go to the Upanishads, one student goes to a master and then sticks to just a few things which the master gives him and he goes on contemplating, meditating on that and he gets enlightened. The master who gives one Upanishad is not the same master who gives another Upanishad. There are so many Upanishads, no? different, different masters gave uh, different Upanishads. The essence of all the Upanishads is one and, one and the same. So, each of uh, the students, that is the students of uh, the different masters, they just stuck to a few things. Actually, very little material was provided in the good old days. 99.9% .9 effort was from the student and just that 0.1% was from the, the master. But that 0.1% made the difference. It is a difference between the tree and the moon, you know. He pushes the student into the space. He gives the depth. But unfortunately, since the penetrative capacity has reduced, you know, it is said in the scriptures that as the Yuga Parivartana uh, took place, that is, the, as the Yugas kept changing, the Ayuhu, that is the lifespan also, uh, reduced. So the, the Lakshana, that is the characteristics of different Yugas. So the characteristic of Kali Yuga, they say lifespan is lesser than what it was in the previous Yugas. Similarly, the internally the penetrative ability is much less. That is what they say. So since the penetrative ability is less, now, how can you gain the wisdom then? Therefore, what we are doing is, we are compensating it by giving more material. So, if you surrender to a master, he will give you enough material for you to penetrate and create a complete transformation from within. So, as we go along, Today we are going to go into the next verse. Now, more facets will be given. And then the verse after that, several more facets will be given. Now, you just go with the flow and keep gaining the wisdom. It's like walking on the steps, you know. Now, suddenly one particular thing may inspire you a little more than the other aspects. At that time, you focus on that a little more. But you don't need to really get worked up about knowing all the facets, mastering all the facets, um, uh, externally, one by one. It is not that way. If you master one, you have mastered everything. It is, the, the, it is because each one is only 
looking at the infinite from a particular angle. That's all it is. From any door you can enter a room. Once you enter the room, you have entered the whole room. The whole room uh, is accessible to you. It is the same thing here also. You enter the infinite through one dimension, then you have uh, the entire, uh, the experience of the entire infinite. That is what is amazing. So, we have been seeing the various facets of Asthita Pragna. Now, why is he giving the various facets? Last week, I did uh, uh, touch upon this a little bit. I will uh, give you more depth today before we go to the next verse. Because when we, as we move to the next couple of verses, he'll be giving you more and more of these facets. You need to understand the purpose of this. See, when you have, uh, when you want to achieve something in life, when you have goals, our yogis broadly divide the goals into three types. The first type is the external goal, material goal, that is, let us say, uh, you have a, a goal that I want to get a car, I want to get a house. Now, this is a material goal, a goal pertaining to an object. It could be a person also, some, some, some object or some person outside. I want to marry this person. I want to become a friend of this person. I want to join this company. I want to get this particular job. So, if all these things are external objects or uh, external uh, beings or situations which you want to acquire. This is the first type of goal. Now, the second type of goal is more subtle, skill oriented, some skill which you want to develop. So, you um, take the inputs from uh, outside, from experts and then you practice and develop the skills. It could be any field. For example, you want to know the, learn the uh, skill of uh, uh, car driving. Now, you learn it from an expert and then you practice it and you perfect it. It could be the skill of car driving, swimming, cooking, whatever it is. This is the second type of goals. Now, the third type of goals, which is what um, is uh, important in this context, it is not related to acquiring something from outside, it is changing something from within. What we call as transformative goals. For example, a person is highly short-tempered and then the person fixes a goal. I want to become a calm person. Now, does he want to acquire something from outside? Does he want to get into any external situation, particular situation? No. Does he want to acquire any particular skill? No. He wants to bring about a change from within, a transformation from within. So, these are the three different types of goals. Now, this will give you um, enormous clarity uh, when you uh, function in your life. So, in the first type of goal, when you want to acquire uh, 
an external object or you want to uh, you you uh, want a person or you want to get into a particular situation now you are different from the object here when i say object it means it could be a thing or it could be a person it could be a situation you know that uh, that you extrapolate and you understand so the object is different from you so you acquire it and then you enjoy it and it will stay with you for a while and then it's going to go away now in the second type of goal which is uh, skill oriented now is it external or internal we can say it is kind of both so you the new skills you learn from outside and then you slowly slowly practice and um, you master those skills and once you master it stays with you for a long time so that is the second type of goal now when it comes to the ter third type of goal where you are wanting to change from within now this is purely an internal phenomenon any amount of uh, uh, external effort may not give you that internal results unless those external efforts are triggering the transformation from within now in this that is the third type of goal the object and you are not different see you are a short tempered person now you want to become a calm person now once you become a calm person calmness and you are no longer separate in the first type of goal they were totally separate whereas in this type of transformative goals you there is a subject and the object merge when the subject and object merge then the um, uh, 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 whatever the transformation you effect will be permanent but anything else which you acquire from outside is temporary it will stay with you for a while then it's going to go whereas uh, when it comes to the internal transformation every effort which you put in will have its fru um, uh, fruits will will bear its fruits but it will remain permanent the results may take a little longer to come but the effect will be permanent now when it comes to spirituality we are aiming at a 100% transformation from within sthita pragnya means a complete transformation from within so this falls under the third category transformative goals so our yogis actually saw various methods by which the mind can be influenced see when it comes to acquiring something from outside the mind need not be influenced you have to put an effort and get it now when it comes to a transformation from within you need to learn to relax and uh, do the subtle sadhana the efforts are going to be subtle to slowly slowly change from within so the mind plays a major role in this the mind has to be transformed slowly just by uh, telling a person now you become calm the person cannot become calm you become cheerful a person is crying you just say now become cheerful the person cannot immediately become cheerful the change has to come from within so many many ways were devised to influence the mind actually this is one of the key aspects of sadhana you know when we say sadhana i always say that don't do the sadhana also mechanically it has to be done with that awareness why do i say that all the time because only when the sadhana is done with awareness it can create that inner transformation so many many ways 
they have devised and that is how this entire uh, wisdom was uh, formulated. Now one effective way is this, that is they, the yogis observed that the mind has this tendency or we can say even a weakness but let us use the word tendency. The mind has the tendency to start emulating whatever it admires, whatever it appreciates. So when you, when you admire and appreciate a negative person, slowly, slowly you will start emulating that negative person. If you observe, admire and appreciate uh, a positive person, slowly, slowly the mind will start absorbing the positivity. You know, this uh, uh, classic um, demonstration of this is when a person leaves one country and goes to another country. I have seen that after a while, he or she starts speaking uh, uh, the language with that country's accent. It is uh, very interesting. See, if a child is born in a particular place, yeah, the child grows there, naturally it's going to absorb the culture, everything. That also is because the mind tends to absorb. Now, a person has lived in a particular, was born in a particular place and let's say he or she lives right up to um, the, the college education or school education uh, or basic college. After that, in order to do the masters, he goes to another country and stays there for 10-15 years. Now, what is amazing is slowly, slowly, uh, you know, he starts admiring that culture, the, um, the way the people behave, the way the people dress, the way the people talk. So, the mind starts absorbing that. And uh, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, if a person stays in a particular place, that person starts talking the language with uh, that country's accent. He starts uh, behaving uh, in, the, uh, in that particular way. He starts dressing in that particular way. Have you ever wondered why is this? Why is this happening? It is because whatever value, that is wherever you place your value, you will start admiring that, you will start appreciating that. And whatever you admire, slowly, slowly, you will start acquiring that. That is why um, in our uh, ancient uh, education system, they used to teach the small children the, the Puranic uh, incidents, the stories, you know, from the Puranas. Characters like Hanuman, characters like the Pandavas, the, I mean, uh, Krishna, Rama, um, uh, you know, Sita. Now, different characters, the, the emphasis was more on the positive characters. The negative characters were also studied, but enough caution was given to say that we should not follow that. So, when the positive characters uh, are uh, introduced to a mind which is fresh, what will happen is slowly, slowly the, the mind will start uh, visualizing, imagining. See, you see any child when he sees a movie or uh, it could be even a cartoon movie, but he will identify with, uh, with some character and start behaving that way. So, whether you are an adult or a child, it is the same mind only. The mind goes on emulating, absorbing the energy of whatever quality you admire in a person whatever, whomever you admire in life. 
that is why it is said don't keep criticizing others because when you start identifying with the negatives of others there is a chance that the mind will start absorbing that negativity you should be careful so having understood the tendency this tendency of the mind what these great yogis did was they uh started describing the sthita pragnya the the person who is perfect one is the state of perfection that has also been explained as much as possible and then the person who has reached the state of perfection such a person is also described different facets are given about that person so uh, this question can come to somebody's mind that uh, why should all this be done if, if we do the sadhana anyway we are going to reach the goal so why should we study the description of a person who has reached the goal when i know there i'll uh, when i go there anyway i'll know that the reason is this itself is a path when you start studying the different facets of a self realized person now uh Uh, slowly slowly the mind will start um, understanding that appreciating and admiring that and the more you start admiring these qualities these facets it will start absorbing that energy you you will start putting yourself in the shoes of astita pragnya the that uh, the mind has this capacity to imagine and visualize so they are using this so called weakness of the mind to influence the personality in a positive way to create a positive transformation from within it is an amazing method amazing principle so they say you know as you think so you become now there it is not mere thinking it is bhav yatha bhavah tatasi whatever your bhavana means is not merely intellectual thinking it is what you feel about yourself what you imagine about yourself your self image all those things put together from the deepest core of your uh, um, uh, of your personality actually starts defining you so the more you penetrate into this which is what we are doing using the yogic approach enough uh, the material is being given to you the platform is being set for you if you just follow the the flow it is more than enough for you the hard work has been done by uh, the master so that you can easily easily absorb the energy behind these facets and as you start getting inspired that will start creating a transformation from within there is nothing for you to achieve from outside remember that because if you if you understand this as a first type of goal which is material then you will say oh um, i understand what is sanyami i understand what is munihi now how to now become a sanyami how to now become a munihi even when you are asking how to become a munihi you are putting munihi as somebody who is outside as if there is something which you need to gain from outside that is the uh, that is not the correct spirit as you start absorbing the energy behind all this slowly slowly that will create a transformation from within you will start becoming a sanyami you will automatically start uh, becoming a munihi and uh, as you get purified with more and more sadhana and when in the higher empowerments your the different uh, layers of your third eye will start getting opened up everything will start happening you will uh, you will start blooming how a flower blooms you know it's the same thing so this sadhana of um, uh, studying the different 
facets of asthita pragnya is a very very effective way of creating the, uh, the transformation from within and it is not uh, again when i am using the word studying see some word we have to use but it is not the external study it is absorbing the energy behind these facets then your mind will start reacting you will start admiring so don't try to become a sthita pragnya in the sense of uh, how you will acquire some object from outside just uh, you know with that goal in the background now go with the flow of uh, whatever the master is setting appreciate every little point which is being explained appreciate every little facet of this wisdom slowly slowly you will become established in the wisdom so this is the goal sthita pragnya is the goal and it is also the path so if i told you straight away when we started this sthita pragnya sthita pragnya is a goal sthita pragnya is also the path you wouldn't have understood head or tail you would have said it's going above my head sir what are you saying but now you are in a position to appreciate this so with this we will go to the next verse which is going to be another start a very powerful start to uh, uh, another facet of the sthita pragnya verse number 70 apuryamanamachal प्रतिष्ठम् आपूर्यमानमचल प्रतिष्ठम् समुद्रमाप प्रविशन्ति यद्वत् समुद्रमाप प्रविशन्ति यद्वत् तद्वत् कामायम् प्रविशन्ति सर्वे तद्वत् कामायम् प्रविशन्ति सर्वे सशांति मापनो तिना काम कामी सशांति मापनो तिना काम कामी सो ही कंटिन्यूस विथ द मैग्निफिशिएंट एक्सपोजिशन of sthita pragnya in verse number 17 so what is he saying here apuryamanam achala pratishtham samudram apah pravishanti yadvat so just as you have yaha saha here he uses the word yadvat tadvat means as this happens so this also so he is making a powerful comparison through uh, uh, a comparison with the ocean he compares the sita pragnya to an ocean he he is giving a very very deep message in this verse samudram means ocean so apuryamanam achala pratishtham apuryamanam means from all directions from all quarters achala pratishtham you know the person is unmoved the ocean is unmoved samudram apah pravishanti see as the samudra as the apah uh, uh, means water as the water enters the samudram the ocean from all the quarters pravishanti means entering so the ocean is there and all the waters the rivers enter the ocean but what is the um, reaction of the ocean achala pratishtham it remains unmoved the ocean is unaffected so as the ocean remains unmoved when it is filled with water from all quarters tadvat so 
காமாக எம் பிரவிஷந்தி சர்வேஹி இன் ஹூம் ஆல் தி ஆப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் டிசையர் என்டர் பிரவிஷந்தி அகெய்ன் என்டர் சக சாந்திம் ஆப்னோதி means that person obtains peace na kama kami kami means desire so not the desirer of the objects objects of desire see this whole verse is uh, put in a very it, it's a very poetic construction so even the intellectual meaning of this verse may take a little while for you to understand but then when we use the yogic approach and go deep into it you will be amazed so what uh, i'm i'm again translating i'm just reading the translation as the ocean remains unmoved when it is filled with water from all quarters so does one obtain peace in whom the objects of desire enter not the desirer of objects so this is another powerful facet of the sthita pragna which is covering both in verse 70 and 71 and that facet it is the most important facet of a sthita pragna which is being covered in these two verses that is shanti shanti means peace so you uh, sita pragna experiences so many things he he is infinite you know he experiences everything what is the most important facet of a sita pragna it is shanti the peace which he experiences now why am i saying peace is the most important aspect it is the most important aspect for you why why has he uh, uh, covered this facet in two verses verses 70 and 71 the reason is because your ultimate goal is peace only shanti what is it that you are seeking in life it is nothing but peace happiness without peace there cannot be any happiness everything which you are doing in life today is directed towards becoming more peaceful this is something which you need to think about even before entering the Uh, uh entering the deeper entering into the deeper messages of this verse just the fact that verse 70 when we come to 71 also you'll see it's the same thing how does he in a, how is the sita pragna in a state of peace this is what he's explaining why should he take so much of pains to explain everything which the masters give actually has so much of significance in your life see supposing your goal was to let us say acquire money that is your ultimate goal then you the masters will explain the facet of sthita pragna that is acquisition of money in detail but that is not your goal if you had to think of it everything which you do you know the relative purpose may be one thing but deep deep within you what is it that you are seeking you are seeking peace and happiness from that experience you are acquiring so much of money you are, you may say sir i am acquiring money not for peace i am acquiring money for financial security why do you want financial security 
supposing you acquire a lot of money and then you invest it properly you create a um, you know you create a lot of assets and uh, you you bought a house you 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 have various other assets also now that gives you that financial stability that financial security what is that which you are experiencing through all that you say ha ah, now i can live peacefully nimmadi arpa in tamil they say no nimmadi nimmadi means peace now i want my uh, uh son to get settled i want him to get a job and you know get married and settle down in a family and so what is it that you are seeking through that that is no doubt a relative purpose immediate purpose but behind that what is your motive if you were to go deep within you will find what will you experience when all that happens you will say ah after that i'll be very peaceful i'll be very happy peace and happiness are two uh, sides of the same coin only so sometimes we say your ultimate purpose is happiness sometimes we say your ultimate purpose is peace it's all one and the same just uh, different sides of the same coin so it is worthwhile at this uh, point to just pause and examine your own life examine your own actions examine your pursuits in life so right from young age you have been running around you you have been wanting so many toys and all that and as you grew up you wanted to get educated you uh, uh, wanted to get a partner you you know so many things you want you wanted to acquire a lot of money you wanted a house nothing wrong with all this but you need to examine what is it that you are looking for through all this see the wisdom is being given here but now you will have to internalize it internalize this wisdom that is the yogic approach so just as a sadhana practice today whenever you get some spare time you know in a relaxed way you just sit and you close your eyes and you look at yourself from inside look at yourself from inside means look at your motives what are you seeking in life okay i'm i want a lot of money fine now if i get money then what will i experience i'll experience that peace that happiness it, it should not be mere words i want you to do the sadhana and feel it from within see unless you do that just merely to run through these um, uh, different facets is of no use that is very easy but first you need to uh, uh, you need to absorb the energy of this word shanti hi in your life and when i say energy here i am not talking of uh, uh, straight away becoming 100% peaceful that, that is the very goal here of um, you know this entire uh, sadhana i am saying you should see the relevance of these verses in your life it is because you are seeking peace that he is uh, spending so much of time on this so i have various goals okay i have financial goals then i want to uh, get a job i want to get a increment in my uh, salary now if i get that increment what is wh- what is it that i would experience oh i'll feel so good i'll feel very peaceful you you yourself will come to that conclusion automatically 
I want a partner in life. Now, if I get that partner, what will I feel? Oh, I will feel so happy. I'll get that peace. So, when you start going deep into your own goals, deep into the factors, that is deep into your own um, seeking, whatever it is that you're seeking, whatever goals you have, whatever desires you have, the sadhana which I'm asking you to do is go deep into that and see what is it that you're seeking through those desires. Don't give a mechanical answer as peace, peace, peace. It's not that. See, then you're coming out of the yogic approach. This is a, a, a contemplative uh, sadhana which I'm giving you. Just try that. If uh, too many things are difficult, then at least take up one main pursuit of yours. Let it be anything, something which you want and which you love to do, you know, so much. Now, when I do that, what is it that I am getting out of it? So, when you do the sadhana, what will happen is, you will slowly, slowly start understanding what you are seeking. See, today, you are not having the clarity about what you are seeking. When I ask you, what is it that you want? You will say, I want wealth, I want health, I want this, I want that. Yes, you are not uh, being false when you are saying that. But you are not having full clarity about what is it that you are wanting. Because you are not wanting that object per se. You are wanting it because you believe that it will give you that peace and happiness. Just for argument's sake, let us say, um, uh, if somebody were to tell you that if you get uh, a million, now you will get this disease. This is not a uh, true thing. It's just an imaginary thing which I am saying. Or you get this car. Thereafter, you will suffer from this disease. Or you will suffer in life like this. Now, will you want that car? Will you want that million? You will definitely not want it. So, the sadhana which has to be done in order to penetrate the uh, these two verses that is verses 70 so verse, verse 71 is uh, going to give you again uh, so many messages so we will right now focus on 70 so the the sadhana to penetrate and go deep into verse number 70 is in trying to penetrate your own desires what is your motive in life what is it that you are seeking in life? Incidentally, this verse has uh, amazing messages. This is uh, this is one of the uh, you know it, it's there are a lot of secrets hidden in this verse. Even the secrets of materialization are hidden in this verse. Everything cannot be revealed because beyond a point you will have to do the sadhana also. So, the higher empowerment courses, many of these things will be taught to you. Because each of the principles which he is giving here is a sadhana by itself. It is amazing. He just puts it so easily and he says, So does one obtain peace in whom the objects of desire enter, not the desirer of objects. So easily put in a poetic way. See, that is what a poet does, you know. All the great masters were also poets, kavihi they were called. They were seers and they were also poets. They, they, poets means they were artists, you know. See, any master will become artistic. Not necessary that every master has to write poetry, it's not that. Everything which he does or, or everything which he does will be done in an artistic way. So, in a very, very artistic way, he says, the objects of desire enter that person. 
he is differentiating between the, the uh, sthita pragna and a kama kami. Kama kami is one who runs after the objects of desire. So these are uh, uh, very very powerful verses, you know. So will you do that sadhana today? It is very important. That is wading um, through. Uh, that is uh, going deep into your own actions, your own desires, your own uh, uh, goals, and sensing, feeling, seeing. Again, I am using the word seeing, you know, internally seeing what is it that you are seeking. See, the central thing, the clue is this only. The central thing which you are seeking is Shanti, peace. The other side of Shanti is Ananda, happiness. So, that is what you are seeking. You are not seeking different things in life. See, one person may be seeking wealth, another person may be seeking, uh, may be seeking uh, relationships, third person may be seeking name and fame, fourth person may be seeking a job. Now, it looks like all of them are seeking different things. You yourself may be seeking all these things in different degrees. But what these great yogis are saying is that, you are not seeking different things in life. You are seeking only one thing in different ways. What is that one thing which you are seeking? It is Shanti. See, the right way would have been not to straight away say Shanti. Give that uh, question to you. And say, what is that one thing which you are seeking in life? And then leave you for a few years to do the contemplation, meditation and discover. But we can't adopt that method here. Because if I leave you for another few years, what will happen? Nobody knows. You, you don't have the capacity. When I say you, I don't mean you personally. The yuga, uh, the yuga itself is like that. That is why it's called Kali Yuga. The capacity to penetrate has uh, reduced because the attractions are also so many. The mind gets involved in the various attractions. So you lose the very uh, uh, consistency in your sadhana. That is why I say do your sadhana consistently. The first sadhana is every Sunday you should watch. So you should be careful, especially when some new activity is started by you in your life. Like supposing you are having a, a, a baby. I know many people, when they have a baby, the first few months, it will be uh, total chaos because this whole, uh, the baby's timings are different. Starting from sleep timing and everything, you know. So, in that uh, confusion, they, uh, they, they get disconnected. They stop either watching the Sunday discourses or they stop doing the personal sadhana. So, not only baby, I'm, that is only an example. Another example could be a person joins a company and uh, it's completely new kind of work and uh, schedule is also new. So, in the mind can get caught up in that. And that can pull you away from your path. You have to be very, very careful. If you are truly connected to your Guru, if you are truly, truly a sadhak, you will uh, understand how the mind goes and immediately pull it back and you will be consistent in your sadhana. So, have a watch over this, over your own mind. See, I am giving you the sadhana of trying to find out what is it, what is that one thing which you are seeking. Now, if, uh, you know, you will not be able to do it beyond a point and that is why we require another Sunday, week after week, you know, that focus is being built slowly. 
So you may build the focus for many months carefully and suddenly if you give a break for few weeks, the whole thing can go apart. You will have to again rebuild. That's okay. In case that happens, as it is said, you know, you sh uh, a, a yogi who falls bounces back like a rubber ball. He doesn't fall like a lead plate. He doesn't stay put there. He immediately bounces back. That should be your spirit. But if you are more intelligent, you will not, uh, uh, that is, you will be very much aware when the mind slips and uh, you can use your willpower to ensure that the basic sadhana is done. So that is very important. So we cannot do that. We cannot uh, follow the ancient method uh, uh, fully right now, just giving one word and for you to do the sadhana for next uh, five years, you do sadhana on that and come back. Means your uh, you, you will stop doing the sadhana itself because the mind is so deadly. The mind is so deadly, it is so caught up with whatever it is attracted to that it doesn't allow you to sit quietly and penetrate and find out what is it that you truly want. And believe me, the day you fully, fully absorb this point that what I am seeking is only peace, thereafter, everything which you do will become a sadhana. Because whatever it is that you do, you will start directing it towards the inner peace. Why am I wanting a particular sense enjoyment? If that sense enjoyment is going to, um, uh, let us say, cause you pain, will you go behind it? Just ask yourself, no, what is it that I am seeking through the sense enjoyment? What is it that I am seeking through money? What is it that I am seeking through name and fame? What is it that I am seeking through relationships? In every experience, there is something which is driving me. I am searching for something. What am I searching for? Today, in the meditation, I will, uh, we will do Nididhyasana on that. I will activate that uh, quest within you a little bit. After that, in your spare time, just do that sadhana. It is not about uh, writing the uh, point in your book, uh, yes, I am seeking peace, or it is not about telling yourself, I am seeking peace. It is about going deep within and experientially feeling what you are seeking. That is what is a yogic approach which will take time. So when I say do the sadhana today, Whenever you get spare time, you can do the sadhana. Just close your eyes and you know, ask yourself, what am I seeking in life? So I have given you enough clues. You are not seeking different things. The mind is creating an illusion that you are seeking so many things. I, I want so many things. So that is why you are constantly in a state of stress. Even if you are given hundred things, you will still be agitated. Because the mind believes that I acquired thousand things. Unless and until I get thousand things, now I cannot be uh, uh, okay. You know, that's how the mind thinks. But the moment you understand that you are actually not seeking hundred things or thousand things, you are seeking only one thing in thousand ways, then that gives you immense clarity. Even if you don't have those thousand things, uh, thousand things, even if you have only one thing with you, you can still get what you are seeking. And once you get what you are seeking, which is uh, peace, you will become very, very calm and collected. Externally, you may you will become very dynamic. That also we are going to see in these verses. How he attains that state of peace and then he starts functioning dynamically externally. So if you want to 
become a sthita pragnya this is a very important sadhana that is recognizing what you are seeking recognizing that you are seeking only one thing not many i'll stop with this here and leave you with that idea and in the meditation we will strengthen this quest you know that is i'm seeking only one thing in my life not many it's an amazing uh, uh wisdom you know just absorb absorb it it will transform you completely so before we do the meditation i'll take up a few questions the this question has been asked by nimish garg hari om gurudev thank you for the guidance in showing the path to inner self i wanted to ask a question last couple of nights i woke up in middle of night and noticed my mind is jumping from one event to another these events are regular day to day activities for example i saw something on tv or some office related activity it runs like a movie in auto jumping from one scene to another without any control my question is is there a way to rest the mind and what should i rest in what should it rest in thank you so much nimish garg so i'll take up two questions together there has also been another question by uh, narayan v both of them have put it in the youtube section only so hari om guru ji pranams i wish to get a small clarification guru ji mostly while doing the sadhana there is lot of body movements especially in the head neck and waist hip region but i continue with the sadhana with my eyes closed wish to know whether this will have any long term health hazard as the movements are quite fast and ferocious sadhak narayan vi i am taking up these two questions uh, because they are very relevant to one's uh, sadhana now uh, see when you start doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana or i would say as we go along the yoga sankirtan sa- as i introduce you to higher and higher levels of sadhana even in yoga sankirtan what will happen is that will start uh, the cleansing process see sadhana is like cleaning up a room so when you start cleaning a room see the room looks very neat and clean from outside but when you start removing the sofa and uh, uh, you see a lot of dirt under the sofa suddenly then you bring out the dirt suddenly the room will look very dirty it may the the when you bring out the dirt outside and you know all that that that, that may cause an unpleasant uh, uh, or um, a smell you may not like it but still that is a process which you need to go through so once you have removed all the dirt thereafter the room will be in a, a state of uh, uh, neatness that is it will be very clean and neat truly earlier it was not ne- uh, clean it was just made to look clean superficially so similarly you see you have been storing a lot of negative impressions in your mind in the deeper layers of your mind it is called the karmic body karmic body is the is the body the deeper layers of your personality where all your karmas karmas means the deep rooted impressions are stored and then let's see they are all hidden just as dirt can be hidden under the sofa you know and the uh, room looks uh, it looks as if the room is very neat so it looks as if everything is okay but when you start doing the sadhana the first level of sadhana 
it will start removing the first layer of dirt. Suddenly the room will look as if it is dirty. So when uh, you say, Nimishji has said that, you know, when he, uh, does a sadha, he started doing the sadhana, now in the middle of the night he woke up, he was able to see his mind jumping from here and there. It is not that the mind is jumping now. The mind has always been jumping. But now, through the sadhana, you have become more aware of it. What is happening at the deeper level that has come to the surface? It is a very positive sign. The, see, when I say it is a very positive sign, I am not saying the mind jumping from one thing to another is positive. I am saying uh, the increase in your awareness is positive, which is the first sign. It means you are doing your sadhana properly. So, what should you do? No special technique or anything. Don't look for that. Continue with your sadhana. Do for some more months. If, you know, With every month, you will find that these layers will keep coming out and they will get released. See, what you should do is, when you are doing the Yoga Sankirtan sadhana, don't try to be calm uh, or, or meditative in an artificial way. Rather, keep doing the deep breathing. All these layers of dirt will keep coming out and will keep getting released during the sadhana. You may feel, oh, I am supposed to focus. Now, why are all these thoughts coming? I have never asked you to focus when, when do, while doing the Yoga Sankirtan sadhana. Just do the deep breathing and let this energy clean you up from within. See, the Yoga Sankirtan audio has been designed in a particular way where there is a minimum and maximum limit of energy awakening which has been put. Because if too much of energy is awakened, you cannot do it by, or you cannot handle it on your own. Too little is given, then there will be no cleaning up process at all. So, just enough for you to manage. So, um, uh, you, you just start doing that, start doing the deep breathing. Don't try to resist it. Even uh, Narayanji has written that uh, a lot of bodily movements are taking place. See, that is also another release only happening. So, what should you do at that time? Just do deep breathing. Don't encourage the experience, the movements. You should, not, you, you should neither encourage nor should you try and resist the movements. Let them be there. You go on doing the deep breathing. The Yoga Sankirtan uh, vibrations, you are you're hearing and you are absorbing the higher vibrations. As that is happening, just go on breathing. For some people, some bodily movements may come. For some people, some emotions may come. Thoughts may run here and there. It doesn't matter. Don't resist them. Don't try to avoid them. See, what is there within only is coming now. But don't encourage them also. Next day when you sit, don't look for it. Like there is a person who had sent a message saying that uh, every day he was having a lot of, uh, you know, his hands were shaking and this, that when, while doing Yoga Sankirtan. He said, I have started enjoying it so much. Last few months it's happening. Then I told him that, see, initially when it came, it was a release, something got released. But thereafter, now your mind is giving too much value to these movements. It has started enjoying that process. So, every day subconsciously, your mind is looking for it. So, I said, now drop that value, even for these kinds of releases. Sometimes you may get very divine experiences. Just enjoy that at that moment and then go further with the sadhana because none of these experiences are permanent. Your ultimate goal is self-realization, God-realization. The Yoga Sankirtan has been created so that you reach your ultimate destination. You achieve your ultimate purpose of self-realization. All these experiences you will have. As we go along further, you will have more and more experiences. 
all okay. Just keep proceeding. So what should you do? Just do deep breathing. Even the bodily movements, all that will go away. Because something you have stored within and it is coming out in some way, either physically or emotionally or intellectually, allow the, that energy to get released. The healing is happening. The Shakti is doing the cleaning up process. If you are finding it very difficult to release, just surrender to the Guru Shakti. Ask for the higher help. You will get it. Automatically you will get it. You will get it in a way uh, that will help you. You know, uh, another person has uh, sent a question. I'm just reading that. Uh, Anuj Garg, he has uh, sent a long mail. Uh, Pranam Yogishri, many things he has written. Uh, now, one of the things is, uh, I'm following the discourses for the last two, three months. Uh, last week you had answered this my question and after that you came in my dreams healing me. Physically when I went into the dream. So what, what does that mean to me Guruji? I need all the help in reaching the ultimate goal of my life that is moksha. Now what does it mean? It means the healing is happening. See that, that's what I told you. Don't give so much of importance that, ah, yeah, Yogeshri, I had a dream about you, you came and gave healing in the dream. It doesn't matter what way the higher Shakti is giving you healing. Remember one thing, Yogeshri does not give healing. No human can heal. It is only the higher Shakti which gives healing. The higher Shakti will heal you according to whatever your requirement is. So don't give so much of importance to all that. Yes, if you had that wonderful dream and you, you're saying you, you know, you've, you've got a lot of healing, you felt so good, say thank you. And there, you know, offer your gratitude and then continue with your sadhana. That is the key. See, for those of you who have registered for the Prana Tattva, I have started the healing process. You may, you will already be uh, feeling the cleansing process also happening. So it is very important for you to do your sadhana. It is very important. So even though all these questions, the, these three questions are um, uh, looking different, they are all uh, interrelated. So when you do your sadhana under the Guru's guidance, so many experiences will come. Some of them may be very nice, some of them may not be so pleasant. I am openly telling you. Because you have stored a lot of dirt within and the Guru is trying to help you to clean up all the dirt. So when that dirt comes out, there is nothing to be afraid of. Will those movement cause long term health hazards? No. It is like an exercise only. Why should it cause health hazard? It is like asking if I do exercise, will it uh, cause health issues. No, it will not cause any health issue. So, provided you do this deep breathing and release, don't give any extra value to the mode of release. What is important is the deep breathing and the connection. After every round of sadhana, every day when you finish your yoga sankirtan sadhana, you should feel very light. If you are not feeling light, means there is something which you have not released. The next session, you release it. Layer by layer, all the dirt will start getting cleaned up. And as you get cleaned up, this is the answer to uh, Nimish you had asked, the, uh, you know, how to calm the mind. The mind will automatically become more and more calm. And every empowerment session which you attend, the cleaning up process is more intensified because the Guru you know, gives the, uh, the Shakti and uh, uh, and he monitors the whole process, that is the empowerment. So, the base level of growth will, uh, will move up, you know, very fast. So, three things only you need to do. One is the Sunday discourses, other is everyday sadhana, your sadhana and then attend the empowerment course. 
every year. You know, you are very fortunate to get it every year. I'm saying, I'm talking of the empowerment programs. Just make use of them. And if you're doing all this, the cleaning up process will have to happen. So when the cleaning is happening, don't get confused. Because as we go along, more and more things. See, it's not only dirt with respect to this birth. With respect to previous births, so many things are there, you know, so many things are hidden within you. So, I am waiting, I am preparing you and patiently waiting for, for you to get more and more matured to be able to handle the higher Shakti. Then only in the empowerment courses, I will keep introducing you to higher and higher levels. Okay? So, we will do the meditation now. Sit in a relaxed way. Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. With every breath, I am becoming more and more divine. With every breath, I am going deeper and deeper into myself. At the superficial level, I am seeking so many things.
but deep within me what is it that i am seeking in life i seem to want many many things external wealth sense enjoyments emotional relationships intellectual delights and many other things what is that one thing which i am looking for in all these experiences offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters
slowly come back wriggle your fingers your toes rub your palms together to create a warmth cup your eyes with your palms gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head and neck slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So today I took you deep within you and initiated this quest within you. You have to gain the inner clarity about what you are seeking in life this ancient wisdom this timeless wisdom has all the answers but you should first understand the question the answer has no relevance without a question so without you understanding what you are seeking you cannot reap the real real benefits of the yogic approach that is why i am spending a lot of time on this So in your spare time do this sadhana just sit quietly and casually examine your life examine your motives and put that question deep within you not verbally but internally what am i seeking through all this don't even define it with the word peace or shanti See, I didn't do that in today's meditation. That is meant for you to uh, get some focus, you know. But otherwise, just ask yourself, what is it that I'm seeking? I want you to uh, experientially feel what you're seeking, and then when you come back next week, we will go into more depth. Okay. so regarding the prana tatva level 1 a lot of you have uh, registered and as i told you i have already started the preparatory healing process the different kind of healing process which i am doing to prepare your uh, pranic body to tune in your pranic body to be able to receive the higher empowerment because during the empowerment we are going to awaken the prana vayu sharira which is very powerful so a lot of preparation is required 
right from day one, the energy levels are going to be quite high. So, uh, whatever preparatory material will be given to you, uh, it will be given to you with the instructions also. So, just follow them and uh, don't overdo it. Like supposing I give you one meditation material and uh, the instructions are do it once a day or twice a day, whatever. Stick to that uh, dosage. It is very important. So, right now, do your uh, regular Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana and if um, and uh, Kaya Tattva also, that, that Sadhana you do and don't uh, forget to tune in your physical body by doing at least half an hour to 45 minutes of some Kriyas, some, some form of exercise. It could be even brisk walking. So that is also very important from now itself you start that and uh, whenever it's required, see from, from my side I've already started the healing process but this is only for those who have registered because this healing is different. This is to prepare and fine tune your uh, subtler faculties you know and then as and when the uh, uh, preparatory uh, material is required that will also be sent to you, so then you can follow those instructions. Okay, it is very important to prepare yourself for the program. So as far as you are concerned, don't think the program is from November 29th. No, the program has already started. The day you, the moment you register from that moment, the program has started for you. The healing has already uh, is already being given to you. So, you one more thing which you need to do is write down your uh, goals, what you want to achieve in life. The more clear you become, the easier it would be to practice it during, uh, to materialize it during the empowerment course. Okay? So, thank you very much. We'll meet next week. Hari Om.